Windows 11 is more aggressive than Windows 10 was for preventing a person from creating a local user account. Microsoft really wants you to create a Microsoft account to log into your computer with. Well, there's a few, a few reasons why you may not want to do that. Let's suppose you have a computer in the family home. Anybody in the family should be able to go up to it and use it. So you might not want it to log in with your own Microsoft account. So you want it shared between people. In an office environment, you might not have a company domain name, and so the only way for people to log in with Microsoft accounts would be to use their own personal Microsoft account. That's not a good idea on a business computer. There's some other justifications for wanting to have a local user account and not have the computer associated with a Microsoft account. Much has been published about ways to do that, and they mostly consist of connecting to the internet at a certain spot during the Windows 11 during the Windows 11 setup where it requires that you connect to internet if it senses that you're not already connected. If you have an ethernet cable connected to the computer, then it's probably just going to breeze right through it. You're never going to get hit with a question, but it's going to force you to use a Microsoft account unless you use a technique to avoid that. So here I'm going to talk about and, and show one particular technique that I think really outshines the others. Uh, but first, uh, a technique that you could use if, uh, on this laptop, for instance, there is no Ethernet connection. It has a built-in Wi-Fi and there is no button to turn off the Wi-Fi or put it into airplane mode. If you had one of those buttons, then you could use that button to disable the Wi-Fi when you get to the point where that's needed. Another alternative is to use a adapter. On, on this, this laptop doesn't have a USB-A port. It has USB-C ports. So I can't connect a USB Wi-Fi adapter. But I can plug this into this adapter. And then when I get to that certain point, I can just unplug that. Another method would be to use a Wi-Fi router that you can un disconnect the Wi-Fi router when you get to the point, well, it's, yeah, Wi-Fi router, access point. This is a Ubiquiti Unify access point. You can disconnect your connection to the internet from your router or from your Wi-Fi access point when you get to that point. Of course, if you have an ethernet cable, just plug it in when it's required and then disconnect it after you're past that point. The method that I'm gonna show on uh, this one is another method that only came to my attention this morning, I think it was. One of the regular viewers on my channel that was in a live stream with me yesterday, as we were experimenting with different ways to do this, he sent me an email showing yet another way to do it. I'm going to come over to show you that on this, uh, on my computer number two, Here's from Redlines. I'm pronouncing this person's channel as Redlines, R3DLIN3S. This video shows this technique, and then Alex Cheek, who is the viewer on my channel that notified me about this, he did a video himself of this very technique that I'm about to show you. So I'm going to bring this, this laptop that I have here, I have connected to my capture device. So here it is on screen, and this is where it's showing the uh, Wi-Fi connections. So I could connect to my any of my Wi-Fi connections, or I could connect to that Wi-Fi device, that unified device that I showed you, or another method that I didn't mention already is you could set up your cell phone as a Wi-Fi hotspot. And then when you get to the point where we want to disconnect it, which is just any time after getting past this screen, notice that the next button isn't available. I can't click on it now. So we have to give it an internet connection before we get a, can get on to the next step. So you could share your, wi your cell phone as a Wi-Fi hotspot and it would show up in this list. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to plug in this USB Wi-Fi device, and this still is not the, the method that I'm liking the most. 
but I want to show how to do this part. When I plug this into the, um, the USB adapter here, what's going to happen is on this, uh, on the computer, we're going to see that we now have a drop down box to choose a different Wi Fi device. So this would be, when I click on Wi Fi 2, that would be the Wi Fi device that I just plugged into the USB port. So then I could choose one of these Wi-Fi uh, SSIDs, sign into it, click the next button, and then anytime after that, I can disconnect and get to the next place. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and do that here because I need to show you this. Still, we haven't got to the, to the one that I'm most excited about. So I'm gonna connect to this one. I'll put in my uh, code, click next. So now I'm connected to that Wi-Fi SSID. I'll click the next button. And then at this point, I can unplug that Wi-Fi adapter. I can unplug it now, or I can wait to, until it gets to the next screen. Some of, at one point, as I've been talking about this, I thought we had to do this before getting to the next screen. And then I was thinking, well, at what point during that process do we have to disconnect the internet connection, either ether pulling the ethernet cable or pressing a key on the keyboard to go into airplane mode, or in this case, disconnect the USB Wi-Fi device or unplug the internet router. So this is gonna to get to the next screen in a moment here, and I'm gonna show you that it could have been done any time during this. Right after I clicked on that next button, I could have disconnected it that would have been fine. If you forget to disconnect it, it's okay. When we get to the next screen where it's forcing you to create a Microsoft account or log in with a Microsoft account, I'll show how it's okay at that point, how you can recover from this, from not having already disconnected it. I'm gonna pause the video here just for a moment. So here's the next screen. The computer actually restarted. I'm going to click accept. I still have not disconnected the internet. I'm going to show that it's not too late, even if you get past this point. Or you get, you get, ideally I would have disconnected after clicking the next button. But if you haven't done that, it's still okay. I'm going to pause the recording. Again. Oh no, here it is. Okay, finally. <laughs> Here it's asking for an email, phone, or, or Skype. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect the uh, internet now. So here I unplug this from here and then come back to the computer. In the upper left corner, I'll click this left arrow to go back. And here I can put in a local user account. No big deal. I'm going to pause the recording, then I'm going to reset the computer in order to show the method that Alex Cheek brought to my attention because eh, I think it's my favorite. So here I'm back at the prompt for connecting to network. Instead of doing that, I'm going to press Shift F10 on the keyboard to get a command prompt. And I have to hold down the FN key on this keyboard, <laughs> so it's kind of tricky. There we go, got a uh, command prompt and then type uh, task MGR. This is to launch task manager and then go to more details. Then scroll down to find network connection flow. Alphabetical order here, network connection flow right there. Single left click on it, then click end task. Then close that task manager, type exit and press enter from the command prompt. Then here we have review the license agreement. So now it's moving forward without having connected to the internet. And here it's asking for a local username. Not only is this easier to do than disconnecting a network connection after having connected it, but using that method of connecting to the internet and then disconnecting it, it goes through a bunch of things before you get to the point where you can type in a local username. 
I did not pause the video between the point of ending task and getting to this screen. It just goes straight to it. So then I'm going to type uh, the username for this computer, which is going to be Sheldon. Click Next. I'm not going to put a password in yet. Then we have a little privacy items. I'm just going to allow them as they are right now just to show the amount of time that it takes to get to the desktop. I'm going to take off the check mark for McAfee. And then we're getting into the user initialization here. This skipped a whole restart process. This by far is my favorite way for creating a local user account. Uh, thank you, Alex, for uh, I don't know what possessed you to go looking for another alternative, but I'm liking that a lot. So I'm not going to show the rest of it. It's going to get to the Windows desktop and just go from there. So I hope this has been useful. Have a great day. Catch you later. Goodbye.